Um, they, they asked me to talk about three different muscles. I, I have to confess that I do, uh, I do actually uh, a lot of pure farmers, but I don't do a lot of a psoas or quadratus uh, lumborum because I just don't have that much referral. So, uh, uh, but uh, basically to look at those areas and to do the injection is not difficult at all. So for piriformis muscle, the, um, usually because of the intimate relationship with the sciatic nerve. So it gives rise to two types of problem. One is what we call uh, pain in the buttock uh, type of uh, 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 localized pain. The other is the radicular pain that because of the relationship with sciatic nerve. Um, just uh, give you some a little bit of a, uh, anatomy here. So the piriformis muscle is the only muscle that transverse through the gregocytic notch. And through here, a lot of imp important uh, neovascular bundle go above or below. And one of them is a sciatic nerve. And the other are, are some other nerve that go above and below. And so because of this nerve, sometimes if, he is, if the muscle is in spasm or actually is an, uh, uh, in a lot of tension, so you can see they form a we call infra piriformis foramen. So between the uh, piriformis and this sacrospinous ligament, the nerve can get irritated. Um, to make it even worse is uh, the sciatic nerve. We believe that uh, uh, usually it is around eighty-six percent is actually underneath the piriformis muscle. But uh, one of the very nice systemic review look at all the article from eighteen hundred. Uh, to 2010, look at all the cadaver dissection, look at all the variation. They find six different uh, type of variations. So you can see sometimes the sciatic nerve can go between or above uh, uh, the piriformis muscle. That's why when piriformis muscle is in a lot of tension or in frame, you can have some radicular pain. To inject into that area, so uh, in the past I've been using a lot of x-ray guided technique. So basically below the SI joint and I just uh, pop my needle, and I use a nerve stimulator. So uh, as soon as I go through the first layer of muscle, which is gluteus maximus, the whole table shake <laughs> like this. And then when I transverse, when I pass the needle further, further, and suddenly actually the room get quiet because the table is not shaking anymore. So then I know I'm through the gluteus maximus, then I'm in the piriformis, then I inject a contrast, see some nice contrast like this, or like this, then I believe I believe that I am in piriformis muscle. But then there's a study actually look at those uh, fluoroscopic guided contrast control piriformis injection and find if you, even though with an expert hand, in expert hand, you have a very nice control, uh, nice pattern of the piriformis muscle pattern outlined by the contrast, you probably have a 30% success rate. Where's all the needle position is? Most of the time you are in gluteus maximus. Believe it or not, actually, it's my first ultrasound guided injection is after I've done the x-ray, and then I try to use my ultrasound to find where the needle inject a little bit. I say, wow, this is in the gluteus. Although, um, I actually inject a contrast, I give a very, very nice uh, picture. So since then, I actually, I for, I basically, I just uh, give up all the uh, x-ray guided technique. If you use the ultrasound technique, it's around 95% accurate. The, one, of the, one of the best way to do it is actually, I think that the system is to scan from above. You look at the PSIS, and then you can see the ilium, medial, lateral. And then when you see the ilium, then the next thing to do is you go further down, and you know that from the ilium to here will be the gregocytic notch. And then the bone here will disappear. This is what will happen, actually. So now, instead of a whole piece of bone, you only see the ischium on this side, on the lateral side, and you see two muscles, you can see the gluteus maximus muscle, you can see the piriformis muscle, you see the sciatic nerve, you see there's some vessel there if you're in the real life, that you can see some pulsation, you see the peritoneum there. So this is our important structure you need to see, because if you don't, it's the area that you don't want your needle to end up with. You don't want to be in the muscle here, you don't want to puncture, have a hematoma in the artery here. By the way, this is the inferior gluteal artery. Um, one of the, the, the branch. So the, the, the way how it looks is actually the sciatic nerve 
does not have a neovascular bundle, just side by side. So what happens is actually is the inferior gluteal artery is on the more middle side and just send a branch there. So when you scan, a lot of times you can just see the artery sometimes here, sometimes there, because actually it's just crossing the, uh, the sciatic uh, nerve. And so you don't want to create a, col a colonic a hematoma there. So you need to see all this structure. Um, one way to differentiate, uh, 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 in case you, you don't know where's the piriformis, is actually when the patient is in a prone position, you just internal external rotate, so you can get a nice uh, movement of the piriformis muscle. Okay. Now, the next thing is actually, so, so now you know the piriformis, you need to look at the sciatic nerve. So three ways to look at, uh, to find the sciatic nerve. One is quite consistently, okay, quite consistently is on the middle side of the ischium. There's a triangular shape like this. And the second thing is actually is when you roll, when you start to do the internal external rotation, you, what is what we will see? When you do the external internal rotation, there's a triangular structure here that is not moving. So you know that something else is not the piriformis muscle. And the first thing is actually is the best is, is to use a Doppler and then you see actually, wow, this, although it looked big, actually a lot of them are actually there from the butt vessel. So then the, that is three ways you can for sure you can see the sciatic nerve. So you can see actually, so now is what I just mentioned. So you can see the artery here or there. Yeah, it depends on the position, but somehow actually the artery is actually across the sciatic nerve. So that's why it's not like a parallel a neurovascular bundle that you should see for other structure. Uh, so then the, in, the, in the past I used a nerve stimulator and actually I can see here. And I recommend if you haven't done this before in your first career, in your first uh, series, you may actually want to use a nurse stimulator because you may not see your needle well. And that's is quite easy, you can just uh, uh, hit the sciatic nerve. But if you have enough experience um, and, you, and you can see the needle well, and uh, you, for me actually right now, I don't use a nerve stimulator needle. But I, I recommend you to do this when you first try this procedure. And actually look at here is where you, you see this. It's actually there's only one CC here then you can see the spread of the medication within the muscle. And it's very definite. And there's no doubt you are in the muscle. You don't have to guess. Unlike the contrast pattern, you have to guess. Um, you can inject local anesthetic without, without steroid, but uh, a lot of my practice, I inject the Botox. I inject basically no more than one cc because it's, a, it's, it's not a huge muscle. When you inject a lot, it really hurt. And uh, theoretically, you inject 50 units, but in Canada, the Botox we have is the botulinum toxin A, which is in 100 unit per while. If I give 50 unit, uh, I don't know what to do with the other 50 unless they have some wrinkle problem. So I just actually give the whole 100 there. <laughs> Cordius lumborum. Um, this is the muscle actually is, uh, if you think about this, it's a little bit more continuous with the abdominal wall. So this actually is the, a picture of here. So you can see uh, just a paraspinal area. But deep to that, you have the psoas, and then besides this, you have a cordial lumborum. But if you think about this, if you actually, this is a, one of the, the picture, you can see this abdominal wall muscle, the external oblique, internal oblique transverse abdominus. It's actually it's more like a continuation of this along here, okay? And the psoas is much deeper. So um, this, is a few, this is an important relationship. I always start with to see the, the free layer of muscle, and then scan more posterior, then I will see actually the cordial lumborum over here, a little bit thin, uh, latissimus storsi here, and then you can see the, um, the erector spiny muscle. So why we have to inject? Um, for physiatrists, so you probably know really well is uh, patients who have a low back pain, they, they, have a, a, like, they, they feel like a sharp knife. And uh, we always talk about when you have low back pain, you have the so-called shopping cut sign, like this. And a lot of time, probably because there's a huge muscle spasm in the front, including the psoas. So you feel better when you curve the body like this. If you extend, it really hurt. To the extent, a lot of patients, they actually use the description. They are forced to crawl on their hands and knees to get to the bathroom when, get out of the, or when getting out of the bed in the morning. So it really hurt when they try to extend. 
Usually the pattern is you can't differentiate for any other low back pain, but it can radiate the trigger to all the way to the buttock. Um, the scanning is quite simple. I just say this either quest, I just scan from the front and all the way to the back. And basically what I'm trying to do is I would like to see the free layer of the muscle. So this is a free layer of muscle, external oblique, so this anterior. So imagine the body trunk is here. So it's anterior, posterior, external, internal, transverse, abdominus. You can see the cordus lumborum right there. You see a little bit of a, a, a small piece of a latissimus dorsi there. So this actually is just a, to side by side. So you see this free layer of muscle, cordus lumborum, latissimus dorsi, and then the, later on you can see the erector spiny on the other side. So this the video you can show here is a free layer. This is a more anterior, external, internal, transverse abdominus. I go anterior just to let you, to confirm you have free layer here. And then when I go from the side to the posterior, now this is cordus lumborum. You see a little bit of a lattice stalsi here. And then this is actually, uh, I can't stop, sorry. Hmm. Uh, sorry, let me just, where's my mouse? Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. Let me try again. So you have um, the free layer of muscle, so the external, internal, transverse, abdominus. So you just want, in case you are not too sure, you go anterior, but then most of the time you see this, then you start to see the cordus lumborum right here, let's have dorsi. Let me see, I can pause it here. So, pause, ah, okay. Well, I'm not very good in my hand with the mouse here, but then you see there's, certainly there's a fascia, there's another uh, uh, muscle here, which is erector spiny. So that's why I always like to have a computer in front of me. I, I have find very hard to control the mouse here. Oh, okay, okay, one more try. Let me just put my mouse there. Where's my... Okay, just, a, just a pay attention here. So this is a cordial lumborum. So that, start to see a muscle here. This is actually urethral spiny, transverse process, the facet. So the whole urethral spiny muscle there. All right, so now how to go to the next slide. Okay, so that, Basically, once you see that it's not that difficult, you can do our plane, you can just inject into the muscle. So it's, it's quite a simple technique. Um, just wanted to let you know, I just don't want people just to do the injection without um, some instruction after the procedure. Just like any time when you have a trigger point, you just do the trigger point, let the patient go home? No, if they have any relief, you instruct them to make use of the pain relief by doing some stretching exercise. And this is actually one of the good uh, stretching exercises for quadratus lumborum. You basically swing the body one side or the other. So, um, so when I ask them, when I do the injection, I always ask them to do some exercise afterward. I think um, I, I'm almost there. So I just uh, quickly talk about the psoas. Psoas, um, we all know actually this is a muscle that is uh, just, just, uh, just besides the spine. And it's all the way come down and parallel to the alexis muscle, so they form the uh, uh, psoas muscle. So we, can, we need to inject probably in two situations. One is when patients with a lot of back pain, the physiatrists love to inject in that area, uh, again, to, as a part to loosen up the back pain. Or actually in patients with uh, some contracture. So you want to inject more in the iliopsoas uh, a muscle area here, so more in uh, further down, just in front of the hip, as a part of a relief for the contracture. Um, I don't get this referral. I don't. And I rarely get the referral over here. So uh, I have to say, I don't do a lot of injection, but this is actually what I suggest to do. So you should patient present with actually, again, low back pain. They can actually present because of the iliopsoas attachment. They can present with back pain and sometimes radiate to the front. Now, this is a picture from our own website, but I can tell you we don't, so this is, um, I don't know if you can see, this is actually the, where the ultrasound probe is. You have the spinous process, the transverse process, the vertebral body. So this actually is the erector spiny muscle, cordus lumborum. You can see the psoas muscle here. 
we put this picture up because I think it's nice, but we, we don't usually see such a nice picture. Um, because when you see this picture, why not just actually put the needle in plane all the way to here? I try this, the only problem I have is, uh, when you do this when the patient is not that, well, if the patient is well nourished. So you don't, you don't see that well. So in that case, I probably use some mouse here. When you do the in-plane technique, so you, you may actually go and impel the, 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 uh, the spinal canal, um, the nerve root, or actually so you may see, not see the peritoneum well, and then you can just go to peritoneum. So I thought about this actually is that eventually I come up to another technique. It's just what we usually do all the time. And again, I'm open to some comment is, when we actually insulate, just like we are doing so as practice block, we put the probe over there on the transverse process. And we see the transverse process really well. And we can basically, underneath the transverse process, you can see this MRI picture. You can see the whole uh, psoas muscle is right there. So it's a, it's a great window. I know there's a psoas plexus there, but I remember a good olden day when we actually put the needle with nerve stimulator. We just go through there many, many times without stimulating the nerve. So it's just a plane where the nerve coming out. It doesn't mean that when you go through, you will hit the nerve for sure. So, and this actually is a, uh, a, a trigger point we usually don't sedate the patient. We can just actually go through and go through this window and put the needle over there. I don't think actually it's a very difficult technique. I'd rather do this. You can see it much better in obese patient than the implant technique, which I don't see, I don't think I can see the psoas muscle that easily with the implant uh, from the scan last time. I think this is what I just want to talk about. So we talk about the psoas muscle, we talk about the cordyceps and borum. I think most of the time as a pain specialist, you will get the referral for a periformis injection. Probably is the one that you see more. Thank you.